Well, hello everyone. This is going to be another amateur radio video. Uh, a friend of mine gave me uh, a number of radios that he'd like to sell. And so he gave them to me to check out and see how they work and all that sort of thing. And because one of the radios was a radio that I really liked when I was uh, active in back in the mid eighties, uh, I thought this gives me a chance to go down memory lane from the mid sixties uh, until now and uh, show where amateur radio has come in the last number of years. I got introduced to radio from, with my brother. I was about in fifth grade and he was uh, like in ninth grade. And, uh, and we learned the code together. And, and uh, I failed my novice license, fortunately. Uh, they, my brother passed his license. And, uh, and so when you pass your t license, you need to set up a station. So he built a night T60. Uh, a transmitter, crystal control, and uh, tell you got the bugs worked out of it, uh, you know, six months had gone by. And so you, you had a one year novice license, non-renewable, and you had to get your code speed up to 13 before you could move on. And that's just uh, so unfortunate because you, he got his technician license. And when you get your technician license, you lose the, your novice privileges of code on the low bands. So uh, that's kind of a sad chapter in history, but, uh, but uh, I capitalized on his experience. We had a night, uh, Lafayette TA-63 uh, receiver, which uh, was so broadbanded you could almost, it was hard to use. It was almost impossible to uh, select one station out of many. And uh, so toward the end of his uh, year, uh, we, we got an NC270, a used NC270 receiver, which is almost like this NC155, uh, which my friend had. And I bought it just because I wanted to hear what it sounded like back then. Um, it's just hard to imagine how selective receivers have become in the last 40 years. And so uh, I wanted to just hear what we sounded like so that uh, I could remember that time. So that's, this is the first radio I'd like to introduce to you, this uh, NC-155. With this uh, receiver, you first of all need to pick up the antenna. You pick your band, uh, and we're on 40 meters at the moment. And, uh, the, uh, and you did... You did, have you did have certain selectivity here, uh, uh, from 3.0 to 0 0.06. Um, however, 0 0.06 really isn't 0 0.06. As you can hear, if you're, hear if you're listening to one signal, you're needing to, uh, with your ear, tune out everyone else, even with the selectivity at 0 0.06. But it hears everything. Uh, it's a surprising how these radios, these old radios, hear most everything that the new radios hear. It's just that we're able to be so much more selective today. It does have a BFO here. Uh, the BFO uh, is like an RIT, and you would switch to, uh, to, when you switch to sideband. Uh, you, the way you go from LSB to USB is by tuning the, uh, the BFO. So uh, with this radio, you pretty much have the RF gain up all the time. Uh, whereas the modern radios, you're, uh, you have uh, the, RF, the RF gain throttled back all the time. So with the, with the tuning, um, it's not very critical. Um, as you can see, uh, you probably, you might know where you're at within about 10 kcs or so. But, uh, but uh, the sound is great and it still works great. So uh, I'm kind of tickled by this radio. You have a standby receive button here, which uh, we needed to throw whenever the transmitter would go on. That's the, uh, that's the radio that got me on the air. It still works great, which I'm quite excited about. Now let's turn to the Kenwood TS530. I have it all set up here, just like I had it set up back in 1985, 
Got the hand key for tuning on the left side and the paddle with the Morse-Matic keyer, which fortunately still works with a switch and a dummy load. To tune the 530, you just peak the drive by ear, then you switch the mode switch to tune to peak the drive. It really doesn't need to be very high in the scale for full output. Then I switch to the dummy load and peak the plate first, and then the load, and I'm finished. You can see that these 30-year-old 6146 final tubes still give full output. Let me show you now what was pure magic back when I got this rig in 1980, and that is the CW filter. I never had a good filter before. All of a sudden, I could isolate CW filter, uh, signals, CW signals, like I never thought possible before. You can see why I really like this rig. In fact, the only reason I sold it was because I bought an amp which only needed 30 watts of drive, and the tube finals just overdrove the, the amp. So I needed to find a solid state rig, and I ended up buying a Tentec Omni 6, which I kept for like 25 years. But in terms of 100 watt performance, the 530 was just perfect. Let's see if we can work DJ0IH portable Charlie Tango 9 uh, from Portugal. The sideband audio is also as good as any rig that I've had since that time. I still get good audio reports with this rig, so it's uh, really nice to play with this rig again and bring back those memories from the 1980s. And uh, it worked. You know, it wasn't the greatest, but I just wrapped a piece of wire, you know, the bare end around it and uh, a couple times, uh, you know, I had no clue what I was doing. So now let's move to my current station. I've been using the K3 since 2015, when I got a bit scared that the Tentec Omni 6 would not be repairable if it gave me problems. So there's uh, just a lot to appreciate about the K3. First of all, it's small. It only weighs about nine pounds, so it's really easy to take portable. And then in the base mode with uh, P3 here, the pan adapter, it gives me all the information that I need. I use it to find stations in regular times and uh, in contest times I use it to find an open spot uh, to operate from. And yet I can leave the P3 at home for portable use. All the controls that I use, the AF gain, RF gain, CW speed, power adjustment, and filter width, they're all out on front and it's really easy to use. You don't have to go into menus to find adjustments for these uh, adjustments that we use all the time. Because I use a manual tune amp, I really adjust, appreciate the adjustable power tune button. I have it set for 8 watts, so when I change band, all I need to do is take a few seconds to check my paper and then set up the amp for the new band and hit the tune button to center the load and then peak the output 
and just like that I'm at full power. So that's uh, really convenient that I don't have to wind a power button back. Because I use a vertical on 80 and 160, I use a separate receive antenna, which is really nice. You can see here the noise flow comes up and down on the P3 when I listen to the vertical as compared to uh, the listening antenna. I really like the micro keyer to interface with N1MM logging software. It uh, allows me to use the function keys to key the transmitter in CW, which is what I mostly do, but also it allows me to work with RTTY and uh, it also gives me a voice keyer in sideband contests. Often in sideband, uh, at late at night, I need to operate without speaking at all because it would wake other people here in the house. And, uh, and so I can work contests with uh, just the function keys. Of course, I can't run stations, but I can use the, the software to, uh, to key the transmitter uh, when I go back to other people. But, but again, the most important thing is that the K3 really is a, a great receiver for contesting with just uh, really good filters. Here you can see I am walking up a, a very crowded band with strong signals in this 160 contest and I can cleanly hear each station individually even though they're very close and very strong. After a while I will find a little space on the P3 and start calling CQ on my own. So you can see I'm off and running here with the help of the pan adapter. I was able to get a clear frequency and I uh, can't even hear the stations really close to me on either side. I usually use a 400 filter because I like to hear as wide as possible. However, when things get really tight, I need to close down to the 250 hertz. So the K3 really is a great radio for me. It's been trouble free for me ever since I bought it in 2015 and I hope that I can keep it a really long time. It's just uh, I couldn't recommend it more highly. And now for the last chapter in this radio story. Uh, why did I get interested in the FTDX-10 when it came out? First of all, it shot close to the top in the receive selectivity in Rob Sherwood's receiver analysis, so I knew it was a fine receiver. And even though it does weigh three pounds heavier, it's still the same size as the K3. But the really cool thing about it is that it includes a pan adapter built in. The other thing is that it has a built-in interface or sound card so that I can interface directly to a computer without any additional gear. 
Just a simple USB wire allows me to run CW uh, to do WSJTX to do RIDI and hopefully activate a built-in voice recorder with N1MM key function keys but I haven't I haven't uh, done that yet. I must say that the guys I do field day with are a bit skeptical of using any gear other than Elecraft for field day because there's nothing worse than getting in each other's radios when you're trying to operate in a multi-transmitter environment. But the FTDX10 comes in just under the K3 here in Rod Sherwood's transmit composite noise radio comparison. So I believe it'll do just fine on field day. You can see here as I walk up the band during the January North America QSO party, how clean this receiver really is. And the pan adapter makes it so nice to visualize the band activity. So because this radio can't use a separate receive antenna and it doesn't work as well with a manual tune, man, a tune uh, amplifier, uh, plus one could argue that a separate inter interface uh, isolated from Windows glitches is better than a built-in sound card. Uh, the FTDX10 will not replace the K3, but for portable use, I think it will work just great. I just uh, hope that uh, it proves to be as reliable as the K3 has been for me for the past eight years. So thanks for watching this little walk down memory lane with me. It's been an interesting journey for me. And uh, I'm sure that you in your own journey can tell an interesting story as well. 73s to all of you. And we'll see you in the log down the road.